Hi, my name is Macaulay, and today I'm going to be talking to you about malware attacks. So first of all, let's get into it and discuss what are malware attacks. Malware refers to malicious software. These include worms, spyware, ransomware, and adware, and trojans. So a virus, or malware, are computer programs that are designed to infiltrate your computer and do things like steal data from you. Now, hackers will trick you into downloading these programs without your knowledge. And once downloaded, these programs are designed, like I said, to steal data. So they may do things like lock a file or something on your computer and hold it ransom until you pay them money to get it back. This is what's called ransomware, which is a specific kind of malware. Otherwise, they may spy on you and collect information like your banking information and use it to steal your money. And sometimes hackers will just use malware to do things like slow down your computer or delete your data. All right, so how does malware even get downloaded? Like I said, hackers will trick you into downloading malware. So there are two main ways that we may accidentally download malware. One is through phishing attacks and the other is through man in the middle attacks. So phishing attacks are social engineering attacks where a hacker impersonates a trusted individual in order to scam you. And a man in the middle attack is when an attacker comes in between two parties of communication. So they'll hijack a session between a client and host. This might happen if you're logged onto a unsecure Wi-Fi network or an unsecure website. Now, if you want to learn more about either of these types of attacks, we do have videos on them. So do check them out on our cybersecurity page after this. But as an example, in a phishing scam, a scammer might send you an email claiming to be your bank and put some sort of suspicious attachment onto the email. Now, when you click on the attachment, it actually downloads uh, malware onto your device. Now, in a man in the middle attack, it may be less obvious that you've downloaded some sort of malware. So you've connected to an unsecure Wi-Fi network, say at the bus station or at the library or airport or at a coffee shop. And in the process of connecting to that unsecure network, you've left your device vulnerable. And so hackers are able to take advantage of that vulnerability and use it to get onto your device and again, download malicious software onto your device. So. That's how malware gets onto your device, but how can you protect yourself against it? So the first thing you wanna to do to protect yourself against malware is to reduce device vulnerabilities. The first and most important thing you can do is to keep your software up to date. Keeping your software up to date means that your device will be more capable of detecting any sort of threats and warning you if a threat is detected. This also leaves less gaps in your system, which is especially important for those man in the middle attacks. The second thing that's really important is use a VPN, especially if you're using any sort of public Wi-Fi network. Sometimes we need to use public Wi-Fi and it's actually perfectly okay to use, but it's great to take some precautions to make it just a bit safer. And using a VPN is a great way to do this. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network, and it's simply just a computer program that you download and you turn on, and it creates an encryption around your connection to different Wi-Fi networks or websites to make sure that those hackers can't get in between that connection. Now, these are especially good for protecting against those man in the middle attacks. So if you wanna learn more about VPNs, check out our man in the middle attack video for a step-by-step -step of how to use a VPN. Only use your dedicated device app store to download apps and programs. So don't be downloading some sort of computer program off of your internet browser. If you have a Mac or iPhone or iPad, go to the Apple app store. If you have an Android smartphone or tablet, use the Google Play store. And if you have a Windows computer, use the Microsoft store. These are ways that you can make sure that any sort of program you're downloading onto your device has already been scanned for viruses and is safe to download. Next, use an antivirus software. Now, modern computers are really great at protecting themselves and they have all sorts of built-in filters, but if you want to add just an extra layer of protection to your devices, you can always use an antivirus software. These will allow your computer to quickly detect any sort of malware and warn you and help you quickly remove them. And lastly, when you can only use private Wi-Fi networks. 
Now I said, sometimes we need to use some sort of public Wi-Fi network, that's fine. If you do it, use a VPN. But again, where possible, always try to use private Wi-Fi networks that are password protected. Now, another important step for protecting ourselves against malware attacks is to be vigilant. When you're online, making sure that you're only visiting safe websites. So looking out for certain markers of safe websites, that it has the correct security protocols, that you see that little lock next to the URL and that precursor of HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash. This indicates that a website we're connecting to is secure, that we have a secure connection. But even if we are visiting safe websites, we also want to be wary of not downloading any sort of suspicious attachments. So this means being extra vigilant of phishing emails or other pop-ups that may direct us towards downloading some file that we're not familiar with. And lastly, don't click on pop-ups. Sometimes we get pop-ups when we visit websites that are otherwise safe. Um, but just don't click on them. If you go to a website and you immediately get some sort of flashy pop-up, you know, saying things like you've won a prize or even that you have a virus, uh, don't click on it. Exit out of that website right away uh, to make sure that you can keep safe. So essentially, the two main ways we can protect ourselves against malware are to understand how to protect ourselves against phishing scams and how to protect ourselves against man in the middle scams. So again, I highly recommend you check out those two other videos we have so you know how to protect yourselves against those specific types of attacks because those attacks are often what leads to malware attacks. But all that said, say you do accidentally download malware. How do you know if you've downloaded some sort of malware or virus? Well, here are some telltale signs you have a virus or malware on your device. Slow performance, so your device becomes suddenly sluggish, it freezes or it crashes unexpectedly. Unusual pop-ups, so you're seeing more pop-ups than usual. Pop-ups for ads, for virus warnings, things like that, just a lot of different pop-ups, even when you're not browsing. There's unexpected or unfamiliar software on your device, so you notice a new program on your device toolbar or on your home screen that you don't remember downloading. Frequent browser redirects, so you're on your web browser and you keep getting redirected to different websites that you didn't try to go to or you didn't click on. Disabled security features. So you go into your antivirus or into your firewall protection, you notice that they've been turned off or the settings have been changed. So your device itself may now be unable to detect the virus that it has. Excessive data usage beyond what you usually use. So you see sudden spikes in data usage, ones that don't align with how much data or how much of your device you've been using. This could mean that something or someone else has been using that data on your device. Overheating and sudden overheating. Your device is getting hotter, faster, even when it's in sleep mode or idle. Unauthorized access. So you start getting emails saying that, you know, a certain account has been signed in on a new device or that someone's tried to access one of your accounts. This could mean that a hacker has gotten into your device, gotten your passwords, and has began to attempt to log into your online accounts. Files are missing or encrypted, so you can no longer access certain files on your device. Again, this could mean that the hacker is in your device, has been encrypting files or else removing them, starting the process of a potential ransom attack. And lastly, mysterious charges. Again, this could mean that a hacker has gone into your device, taken some sort of financial information from you, and has begun using that information to make purchases or to take out money. So obviously some of these signs of malware can be really scary and frightening, but it's really important that if you suspect that your device has been infected, that you take immediate steps to prevent further damage. So first of all, disconnect your device from the internet. If you are not connected to the internet, the hackers have no way of accessing your device. If you can, run an antivirus scan. Check to see if there is indeed malware on your device. Enter your device into safe mode. Depending on your device, this may look different. So go to YouTube after this and search for your specific device so you know how to do this if you need it. Check for suspicious programs and processes. Go into your app folder and see if there's anything new or unexpected there. If you do find some sort of suspicious program or you run an antivirus scan and it comes up with something, remove the malware manually. 
you can also restore your entire system if necessary. Now, if you don't have everything backed up, this can be a difficult decision to make, but if there is malware running rampant in your system, you may need to just reset and delete the entire computer. Once you get the situation on your device itself under control, make sure that you're changing all of your passwords, your email password, your bank passwords, change them all so that if someone has access to them, they won't be able to use them to log into your accounts. And continue to monitor and report any sort of signs of identity theft or financial loss or any sort of further issues. And if the infection is serious and it persists and you don't feel like it is something that you can handle on your own, make sure to seek professional help or reinstall your OS. So again, restore everything and just start from scratch. And if you have had any sort of financial loss, make sure that you are reaching out to the appropriate authorities to report the losses. So this might be the Federal Trade Commission if you're in the States or the Anti-Fraud Center if you're in Canada. And here's the information for you to write down. All right, if you have any more questions on this topic or need any sort of tech help, you can always reach out to us at Cyber Seniors toll free at 844-217-3057 or visit us online at www.cyberseniors.org. We hope this video was helpful and stay safe.